This week, three sides of the coin, it's all Mark's show. Kiss, Cruise, Six, full recap, Mark Cicchini, ketchups from around the world. <laughs> it really is. Let me tell you guys, uh, had a great time. Can't wait to talk to you all about it. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I'm one of your three co-hosts, Michael Brandvold. As always, I'm joined by Tommy Summers and Mark Cicchini. Woo-hoo. How you guys doing? Pre- really good. Good. Pre-Thanksgiving. Well, I tell you what, this is a great day in the Cicchini household. My, uh, my daughter is home from Western Michigan. I thought you were going to say the turkey was brought home. Oh, even better. Even better. <laughs> The house smells like a symphony. Liz has had sauce going all day. So when I walked in from work, just that spaghetti sauce smell and she had meat in the sausage. It just, it's just beautiful. Is it, the is air it, in the it, chef, house chef, is just beautiful. Chef Boyardee right. sauce? Boy, look at the time. I'm not even allowed <laughs> to hear those words. It's like ragu or something. <laughs> chef Liz Chikini sauce? Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Somebody said too, you know. I, I know Mark's we got to we got to spend money for all this kiss shit, and he can't even get a decent internet connection. <laughs> Guys, what are we gonna do? There's nothing we can do about it. Mark's got to stop buying kiss crap. Yeah. So do we have to hang up and start over again? <laughs> Let's just imagine he's talking to us right now. He looks like he's in a good, happy mood. That's right. Christ. Okay. I, so so you... so Mark, you know, we had a comment left to us. We're recording We're right now, by the this. way. We had a comment left that. It's time for Mark to invest in some good internet. He spends all that money on the kiss crap, and his internet connection sucks. Guilty. <laughs> maybe, if, maybe if Kiss made a modem. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I've had. I've that is had, the, that is it right there. I've had the cable company here multiple times. My, my entire house has horrible internet, just horrible, no matter where you are. My kids all complain. Everyone complains how bad the internet is. I lose signal constantly. Have you told them your three sides of the coin? (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly why they said, huh? (laughs) Probably. She's lucky they even showed up. (laughs) No doubt. Uh, You know, I think we, 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 hey, (laughs) Gene, Paul, Eric, Tommy, if you're listening, we need a license for a kiss. Kiss modem. modem. So Mark will actually invest some money and buy a new modem so he has a good internet connection. And make it a limited edition. If we have to, maybe. Best modem, maybe Tommy, you and I, I just the best buy modem one. That they sell it at Best Buy. It just it did nothing. Let's put a, let's I let's go buy one, one and put a kiss sticker on it. And just send it to him. But maybe, but but see, the one that they would make would have the power of the talisman, and so maybe it would push through for you. Look, no one's more frustrated by my internet than me. No, no, that's, no. Not <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> I, you know, I went on here about two minutes ago with you guys. I thought you guys were still listening. I'm like, holy shit, we're both frozen. Uh, <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, welcome to Three Sides of the Coin. We've always said we spend no money on this show. <laughs> 30 seconds in, frozen drop. Zero, zero. So anyway, today is going to be our um, big Kiss Cruise 6 recap. And we're going to get into that pretty fairly quickly here. But let's give Tommy his little spotlight so we keep Tommy happy this week. Because once Mark starts talking, Tommy's just going to check out. Um, Tommy. No, there's stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go take a um, dump do some cooking yeah. no, that, laundry that would be, easy. <laughs> that That'd would be, be easy. easy 
Um, actually, I'm going to keep it very simple today, but I do want to say something ahead of time. This is about our current episode, which is with Dennis Woolock, art director. Uh, I love how everybody is talking on YouTube. I haven't seen the same stuff on Facebook, although people are leaving comments just about different art directors and who did what and all that. It's really interesting. I'm learning some new things. I like one of the people had said that the um, Frank Frazetta posters or pictures weren't actually for the. I um, saw band. that, and you know what? I want to oh, call. That's... I want. I want to kind of call bullshit on a technicality. Okay. So the technicality is, yeah, you're right. Those covers for Molly Hatch were not commissioned and painted exclusively for Molly Hatchet, but they are Frank Frazetta images. Yes. They they are 100 yeah. percent Frank Frazetta images. The first three covers. And Molly Hatchet went and licensed the images from Frank Frazetta. He just didn't paint them exclusively for Molly Hatchet. So if you want to get in a technicality, you're right. But those are Frank Frazetta covers. Frank Frazetta licensed them to Molly Hatchet, even though he did those images 30, I don't know, 20 years earlier for Conan paperback books or something like that. Um, but he licensed them. He knew what they were right. going for. So I, I just I love how some fans want to try and bust our balls on technicalities. <laughs> not not ours, yours. <laughs> no, you know, no, no, not so much yours, but they do get Mark every once in a while. They yeah. try and get Mark on technicalities, too. Yeah, it's just. Um, um, but it's interesting, though, that people are chiming up and I love the discussion. So everybody, please keep it going. But I'm just going to read one that I think pretty much says it all for everybody. And this is the chief, chief Broken Arrow. He's been a supporter for a very long time, even though we argue with him from time to time. His comment on Facebook is or excuse me, on YouTube is mic drop. One of the best episodes ever. Happy Turkey Day and Baba Booey to you all. So thank you, Chief. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad everybody is really uh, connecting with this episode. And, you know, this is why we have some of these guests on um, to learn these. I mean, how many times has Dennis been interviewed by pff, how many different places? And I've never heard a lot of what we got out of him last week. No, I agree. I agree. You know? But they don't come along every day. It's not like we can just go, okay, well, here's Dennis 2, Dennis 3, and on and on and on. We have all types of different guests giving different perspectives. What, what was the comment? I got it. My Facebook is slower than crap right now. What was the comment I messaged you guys yesterday? Um, Ketchup? About, oh, yeah, yeah that, was, was like, that was Danny. Yeah, it do you have that in front of you, Tommy? Really Can you yet. read that? Yes, I do. This was, this was um, like literally one of the first comments posted on Facebook when, when I shared just the audio yeah. version of this. Yes, okay. So uh, this is our friend Danny uh, Siegelman. He lives here in Minneapolis. Review of the new show with Dennis. Okay, this episode is like an overflowing ketchup bottle of minutia. It's thick, rich, steady, and perhaps even good for you. <laughs> I love when love the I love when the comments incorporate, you know, our bits. Oh, totally! It's fantastic. That means we know you're paying attention. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you know, please, by all means, check out the the episode with Dennis Wallach. Even if even if you're watching us and hate us and have sworn off never watching us again, even watch, though you're watching us, even right though now. you're watching us right now. <laughs> This is the worst podcast ever. You tell you about everything that happened in it. That, that, that's but the kind go, of funny go shit back that, and that. watch last week's show with Dennis Wallach. You can hate us all you want. We're fine with that. But Dennis was freaking amazing as a Kiss fan. I guarantee you, you will learn something in that episode. I guarantee. Into that. Yeah. I Into that, refund, we say you're welcome. I will refund your admission to watch this show if you did not learn something well it's funny i got a i got a text from somebody today um who said you know now i now i really get why you always say like you know having ace or you know somebody from the band paul you'd never because he was talking about the wallach interviews like i'd never we never would have got that out of a member of the band exactly. you know what i mean that that's i, I guess and it's funny because we have to say it all the time that's what this is about. We're trying to get people who are going to give you a different perspective, a perspective you never even thought existed. And I'm not saying that, you know, we're exclusive with him, but 
going back even to, uh, you know, time and Tommy's friend on a couple of weeks, we have some really interesting people coming up here soon as well. There's so many different viewpoints, so many different things to think about, because even when we have people who weren't exactly tied to kiss, we try to give you something to think about or a new way to look at something. Um, uh, whether it's from happy or from the people, the, the star, star Trek, I, trying to get inside your head. So you, think of different things and make this experience so much more fun. Yeah. And that's, it's, and it's, tell you what, that's, that's why I'm here at week after week. It's fun. And I want well, it to be fun for you guys too. And I hope, you know, and it keeps it interesting for us as well, because we can't just do the same thing every single week. You know, we've got to do yeah, different what's your top things. 10 albums. What's your, what's the top worst I mean, guys. It's about so much more than you that. You know, speaking of Star Trek, I wanted to um, give a quick little story. So about a week ago, my wife, Katrina, is a big Star Trek podcast fan. She she doesn't listen to the Mission Log, which John, who was our past guest, did. But she listens to one right. called The Greatest Generation, which I think is more along of a, a, a Mystery Science 3000 type of thing where they sit and... And there's actually history science podcast as well, where they mm -hmm. they make commentary on a show or on a movie and stuff like that. Well, the podcast did a West Coast tour. They did. They went to like four cities along the West Coast. Here, one of the guys is from Northern California, so I think that was kind of a I'm going to go visit my family, but while I'm here, let's go meet some of our listeners and write and, it off on taxes and, and write it off, seriously and then write it off on taxes i mean i'm writing off our trip to the new jersey kiss expo <laughs> um but anyway my wife wanted to go see them when they were in san francisco so i went along with her i've never listened to the star trek podcast i mean i i'm a star trek fan small fan and and they were at a um small theater about 120 people Full capacity, sold out, $15 a head, paid to see these two guys sit down in front of 120 people and record a podcast. And I just sat there just like smiling and amazed going, that's what we do, except it's Star Trek. And these people all around were just laughing at their bits, laughing at the jokes they were telling. And I was just like... It's, it was so kind of cool to see a different world doing the same thing that we do. And, yeah. and, and after the show, after the show, they did a little meet and greet and they were selling their t-shirts to pay for stuff. And, you know, I went up to one of the guys afterwards. And I'm like, yeah, you know, Hey, I'm from a kiss podcast, three sides of the coin. And we had um, John from the mission mission log on. And he's like, Oh yeah, that's cool. Cool. And I go, I need to get a picture with you, but we got to throw up the shocker. <laughs> so one of the yeah, guys, you couldn't do that with Lita Ford. Well, come on, I respect you, Lita you too much. My balls. I I respect oh. Lita. I didn't know. I listen. It was Lita Ford. I we didn't even have a drink together. I mean, at least have a drink with her before I give her the shocker. <laughs> I said to pose with her in a picture with the shocker, not give her the shocker. <laughs> Anyways, and anyway, what one one of the Star Trek co-hosts is is throwing up the shocker, and he's kind of like, "What is this?" And the other guy's doing Spock, so yes. it's like the Spocker meets the shocker. Spocker. <laughs> <laughs> it was just I don't know. I just thought it was really kind of fun and refreshing to see that what we experience in our little Kiss world is what they're experiencing in the Star Trek world. I mean, their listeners and their fans were having a blast sitting there for an hour and a half listening to these guys. Basically, they took one of the Star Trek movies and they critiqued it. And they just sat okay. there and told their jokes and, and, and everything. Oh, and what was the... I made that post, Tommy. Um, I saw I stole, the photo. I, yeah, I stole the line from one of the hosts from The Greatest Generation. Um, some people know I'm right and everybody else is wrong. <laughs> that sounds just like you. I said, you need, to, you need I, a t-shirt. I know when, when he said that, I busted out laughing going, yes, that's, yes. <laughs> that's me. That's, that's me. me. That's me. Well, so, um, how long have they been doing this podcast? Oh, uh, 
I think they're only like 50 or 60 episodes. Okay. Interesting. Okay. That's very cool. Cause it's like, you wonder how many other people did do something like this similar in a different area. And cause you don't, we don't, at least from my perspective, I don't see a lot of the outside stuff. No, either and do people, I, either do I. That's yeah. why this was cool. And, and it was just, there was a lot of, you know, listening to those two go back and forth. They had a lot of the same comments and flows and feelings that we do where they're just laughing at themselves sort of like I can't believe people are paying attention to us talking about a Star Trek movie right you know it's like we're what are you guys listening to us talk about kiss come on come on so it was just don't you have jobs don't you have jobs exactly yeah they do they're listening to us on the job (laughs) at work at work yeah work um anyway just it was really refreshing. You know, if anybody's listening, big shout out to the Greatest Generation Star Trek podcast. It was, I, I laughed. I had fun. I, I got it. And, uh, you know, if you're a Star Trek fan, give it a listen. It's the type of thing where I think you would, you would, you would enjoy their humor and their bits. Um, but anyway, let's turn the microphone over to Mark Cicchini. You and I can go out and have some lunch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, where so do you want to start? This buddy? is this this is this is Mark's moment of Kiss Cruise Six. Take it away. Kiss Cruise Six. Uh, I, I will tell you, um I thought it was the best of the six. Um it just keeps getting better. Um had so much fun. I just think now the, the flow of the event I, I even for the first timers, they don't realize it, but it flows a lot better now. I, I think um, just the way everything's set up and the way everything was organized. I mean, there's always glitches. I don't know if you guys saw on on Kiss Online, and and you know, even if you didn't go on the cruise, I think a lot of people saw the merch thing was a nightmare again. Sold out. That's like one within thing. Within one day, right? Correct, and I'm going to get to guys. This is a if if you're listening on Spreaker, you're going to maybe you want to hold off and and go to YouTube the next day. Uh, I'm going to be showing a ton of stuff today. Um, but let's back up though. Tell me what? Why was it a nightmare? Because usually their merch stands, at least when we see them at shows, they're you know very well stocked and very organized. What what's going on? The Kiss Cruise merch stands have notoriously from from the first one on have been a nightmare and people really here's how much people were revolting about it this year and i'm and i'm skipping ahead a bit i, I was at the paul stanley meet and greet where he does the acoustic of course you were. And, um and he even talked about it when you know we were there to hear an acoustic set by him and he's like hey i've heard you guys um you know the whole merch thing is a nightmare you know this isn't good uh, what happened was over the last couple of years, they had it in the library, which sounds as ridiculous as it actually is true. It's a little tiny room. It's it's probably, Tommy, just looking to the back of where you're at over there through that door, it's half the size of that room. Jeez. And you have, you know, a couple thousand people trying to get... Last year, now their library was at the, the rear of the ship, The line stretched almost, you know, a third of the way across the ship. You've seen how big the ship is. Horrible. This year, same thing. People lined up for hours, literally hours in line. And Liz went with uh, uh, some of her friends. I I don't know. I was running around doing something. And she's just like, look, I just brought you a bag of stuff I just thought you'd want. And she got got it almost all correct too um i went back the next day just to to see what i could pick through and a lot of the stuff she got me was already gone and then people i mean just because people know i do the show and whatever they start complaining to me i'm like i don't have anything to do with it what do you want you know (laughs) can't you tell somebody and i'm like don't talk to me i'm busy with paul stanley (laughs) (laughs) so but but what they did is on kiss online or excuse me, on the KISS cruise, if you were if you were on the ship, they sent you a code, and you can get everything. Because I tell you what, I was pissed. Last year, I was lucky. I got one of the last, if I, maybe even 
even got the last sweatshirt. When I went the next day, like I said, Liz went first. Sweatshirts were gone, and I love this. They're so comfortable, and they look really so, cool. So was, was, was the basic issue two things? It was a small location, and they didn't well, have enough the stock? Thing. They put it in a bigger room, the Bliss Lounge, which is a really cool lounge. It's just where they usually do the karaoke. And again, now I'm nitpicking because I just said earlier it was the best cruise, and it was. But then this year, they took it out of the library and put it in the Bliss Lounge. Now, the Bliss Lounge is a really cool place to hang out. It's got, you know, beds and couches and swingers. You know, swingers. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it kind of looks like that. But it's but it's pretty cool. After you know? 11, it's, it's the cherry pit. It's a, it's, it's a cool place <laughs> to hang out. So this year they wasted Admission is your room they, key. They, yes. This year... This year they wasted it though. They, you know, because Bliss Lounge is a fun place um, to hang out, and you know, so that and this year they put the karaoke in the Stardust Lounge, which is bigger than Bliss, but still, it just it was it just didn't have the atmosphere because there's no like stage lights. Like so I said, the Bliss Lounge. Is, you, go ahead. But but let me ask you this though. Is it a nightmare not only because of obviously the line? Is it because there's such a limited amount of merchandise? Everyone wants to go there, number one. And secondly, they don't have enough folks working behind the table to service people. Boom. Exactly. Okay. You just uh, – your your average service issue. Okay. Now, now, everybody, with that said, and I'm kind of bummed we went to that first, it was the best one ever. I Let's mean, get it, it out of the way. Yeah. No? But, you know, but I tell you what. People that watch the show and people have heard it on, you know, on the kiss sites. Yeah, it, it was a nightmare again. And Paul did say they were going to fix it. And guess what? They did. Because if, again, you know, they gave us anybody that was on the ship, got a code and you could order anything. So you could, so you, you could go online and order whatever you weren't able to get. Whatever you didn't get to a, to a thing they had. But see, that's perfect because then you don't have to stand in line. You can go, okay, well, I'll just go get it after the sh cruise. Well, what Paul said during the meet and greet is, hey, how about next year you order it ahead of time and it's in your room when you get there? Sure. Why? Yeah. Why not put everything on an online you know, website and order it online? It's funny, though, too, because Paul said something um, during that, that thing where he's like, you know, on the first kit, on the first cruise, because it, it, when he was talking about, you know, that might, you know, in the, in the scheme of things, that's a minor thing, but he's like, you know, when the first kiss cruise happened, he's like, I didn't even want to come on a boat. I don't like going on cruises or whatever. I just, and he goes, now it's like this huge thing. We can't wait to do it year after year, how successful it's been. And what he was saying was, you know, these are minor things. We're going to get, you know, we should have done a better job. But, you know, it is what it is, but we're going to make it right. And he did. He delivered. Because yesterday, again, we got the codes yesterday, and I spent You know what they months. should have is a smaller boat trailing behind. That's the merchandise boat. <laughs> <laughs> and when you dock, you get onto the boat. Yeah. <laughs> but, have uh, a zip line between the two boats in the ocean. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, start, starting at the beginning, um, you know what, uh, had to do the cattle call, getting in, first day. That part always kind of sucks, but that's no different than going to the airport and having to wait in line and all that stuff. Um, no pre-party. There was there was a pre-party, but it wasn't you know an unofficial one. And I'm, I don't want to step on any toes. I, I just those those pre-parties. I figure we're going to be on the ship for the next five days together. Last thing I knew need to do is run down there and, and go to the pre-parties no offense to people who love them and there's a lot that do and like i said have fun just for me liz and i usually the the day we get there you know do maybe go down to the beach or something just because we're gonna have nothing but five days of kiss craziness so and and trust me it is a whole lot of craziness anyways um get on the boat had a fun i had a ton of fun and let me tell you the three sides love was thick and deep Boy, thank you to everybody who came up and. Uh, you had to describe it like that. Nice, but let me tell you, everybody was so freaking nice that uh, that came up to me. Everybody, everybody I met that was a, a you know part of the Three Sides family, super cool, super nice. Everybody had just nice, 
nice things to say. I'm telling you, I met hundreds of people who, hundreds easily. So that, let, me, let, me, let me ask you, compared to the previous cruises you've been on, once you were on the show, has, has no. it grown? Oh, Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? And let me tell you, I had some incredible conversations. Again, you know what? That's honest to God why Liz was in the merge line. And I was, I, I don't know if you can tell, uh, matter of fact, we're going to, Liz and I did a, uh, an interview with, uh, Craig Gass. I think my voice is about gone. I mean, I literally lost my voice. I was talking three. It was like being on a living, breathing three side show for five days straight. I talked nonstop from the time I got up. Everyone wanted to talk about something on the show or, you know, about you guys or Lisa or something or, and it was so who got, much Who got fun. the most hate? Me? Honestly, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves it. Thank He's you. Like, Thank you. I'm the see, best, he was worried. I'm the best at something. Nice. I'm the best yes. at being hated. <laughs> well, <laughs> Michael was worried that he was being too nice. Oh, no. So well, you guys I, have encouraged I, him. I got more than a few. You know, Mike's all right, but what's his problem? I got that. Line. He's a dick. <laughs> I just look, what do you want to? What do you want to do? You know, he, he, what do you want to do? I can't fire him. It's his show. He's the boss. <laughs> it's, his, it's his gig, man. So he's our anyways, second call. Uh, I, think, I had I had some great great in depth conversations with people about things that went on the show. A lot of fun stuff. We had. I I, I can't remember your name, and I know he watches the show every week. So. Please apologize, because, again, hundreds of people, it's hard to remember everybody's name. But we had a really, really good conversation about the uh, Out on the Streets book. And it was one of those conversations where I was just walking one way, and he stopped me. And we sat and talked for 25 minutes. And he wanted to go deeper into that conversation. And and it was awesome. About about the, the book? About our show reviewing the book? Every, every, about JR disappearing off the failed. planet? Everything that entailed the drama of that month or two, he wanted details, and we and I went into details. Again, you know what I, I've said it before. If if you see me on the street, some things we can't talk about on the show, just what for whatever reason. But you know, personally, I'll spill whatever you you know you want to spill. I mean, look, we're not here to create enemies or, or whatever. But again, we're always going to be honest. But at the same time, you know. This isn't a this isn't a mudslinging podcast. We're here to have fun. It's just guys sitting talking. Every once so in a while, we every once in a while we just try and find the turds in the punch bowl. <laughs> there you mm-hmm. go. Yep. But anyways, um, did so, you get any so, of my favorites where they just don't say anything to you? They just walk by and go like this. Oh, I got a bunch of that too. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's, awesome. too. That's the best. I got I got you know just throwing it up there. <laughs> my wife Liz got it too. You know, just a ton of. Does she, does she like the shocker? Fun. Of course. <laughs> Except it's like this. <laughs> My kids watch this. <laughs> you answered the question. Yeah, don't get Cause on I'm hard. Because <laughs> I'm being honest. Oh. Um, God, I love anyways, our show. So, um, but I will. I want again, and I and I've done this in the past, but it must be said. One of the reasons that it was so good this year is the same reason that I think it's getting better every year. Sony, Matt, Jill, Doug, and Keith. Those people, I saw them at 7 in the morning sometimes. I saw them at 3 in the morning sometimes. They were always going someplace. They always had smiles on their faces. And they were always going to take care of something. I I, I tell you... uh, Keith and Jill and Doug and Matt and Sony and and there's more of those that you know people I know that you know. Let me tell you, they're the they're like the greatest people ever. They worked so hard to make this cruise fun for everybody, and people didn't even realize how much hard work they do. Well, that's Always when that running. you know that's a sign of when you do such a great job and everything is great when people don't even realize what's going on because they're just having fun yeah I, I, again you know what those people need to be recognized and if you're a fan of the show and you were on the boat you don't realize how much those people do 
they're 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 just that that cruise wouldn't function without them especially fan wise they just take care of so much cool stuff so so you know look I, these are people i know personally and i love them dearly but I, you they need to be mentioned on the show you did you yeah. above and beyond all the time so big shout out to you guys also early on uh I'm sitting in the elevator. Next thing I know, I get bulldozed over from behind. It's Eric. <laughs> not, not the first time. I'm like, hey, let's go check out my drums. So we we go behind the scenes there. Tommy, and... you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. <laughs> Everyone's thinking the same thing we're thinking. <laughs> so anyways, so I got to go up on stage prior to the, uh, the Sail Away show, and he had a special kit with uh, old Pearl logos and – just this beautiful it's drum stuff, but he had just an incredible drum drum set up there. Um, different than the type he would have used in the last couple of years. Um, just sounded amazing, but it was so cool to be up on stage and. Well, you know, so, he, so let me let me ask you, Mark. So I mean, we all know how much you love the Creatures tour. When you walked in and saw the stage setup for the first time. What did you think? What did you feel? That was cool. Um, I will tell you, I had flashbacks, and it's hard not to, because they were trying to recreate something you'd seen before. And I think last year when we were talking about the Alive one, there were times where if you just caught a glance, it just reminded you of the pictures you'd seen in the UK, of because that really looked like the UK a live tour from the spring of 76. Oh, I mean, and I'm sure if you can go back and look at some of the pictures, you'll go, Oh my guy can't, I mean, you could, you could almost fool yourself. That was the, that was the case with the creatures thing. I walked in there and I got chills. I, I thought it was super cool. Um, I wish the tank would have done more. Uh, more as in it, what? Well, the original tank obviously shot out smoke and stuff. This one, it just shot out confetti like the first yeah, song. Yeah, but, uh, you know, isn't that because they can't have any of that in a cruise ship? Well, correct, but but also, too, the stage is so small. It's a small stage. And it, it was funny. Right. The, first, <laughs> the first night, Tommy had to, like, duck underneath the— I was watching that. I was watching that. Even I was looking at <laughs> Paul going— Geez, I wonder how careful they are running around back there to make sure they don't crack their head against that turret. Yeah, so, I mean, that kind of stuff, um, it was great. You know, obviously you guys seen the pictures in the video. Uh, you know, I, and, and, and here, let me, let me tell you that the first, the first <clears throat> really good pictures of the band on stage, and, I, and, and again, forgive me if I'm wrong because we get so much stuff said to us, but I think it was Joe Papalardo, one of our listeners, who Great sent, guy. I, sent, I, sent I, us some I, photos and he had some awesome color photos of the band performing. And there was, and I think I shared this photo of Paul where I looked at it and I was just like, Paul Stanley looks like he's on stage in 1980, what, two, 80, 82 yep. when, when creatures, the two, I'm just yep. like, Oh my God, this guy did not age from 1982. Looked Again. freaking amazing. I found myself going, literally, there'd be a, a millisecond, and it burns into you. You're like, holy shit, I've seen this, but it's deja vu, yeah. you know? It's, yeah. it's really, really cool. But and, before you go but before you go any further, I have a question about the drum kit. So you go up there, and you're talking about how it's older with the Pearl logo and all that. So since that's something that they may or may not use, but let's just go on a, an assumption that Eric's not going to continue to use that kit. What happens to that kit? Does he keep it in his warehouse? Does he dismantle it and use it elsewhere? Do do they sell it off? What happens? Well, uh, everything you just said, uh, uh, you know, could everything happen. you just said. Situation. Yeah, it, depending on the situation. You know, I, 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 I could options. imagine, I could imagine Eric maybe keeping the kit itself. Um, the stage might get destroyed, dismantled, and right. recycled to the staging company for somebody else to use bits and pieces of it. Yeah, I was speaking more of specifically the drum kit. Um, the drum kits, everything you just said has happened during the course of the last few cruises. Okay. Or auctioned kept, off for charity. Some he auctioned off, some he gave away. Gotcha. So okay. every, every, all of the above. 
And but you know, on, and, but uh, Tommy, to, to your you said you know they may not use this moving forward. I would add that the shows they've done since then in Mexico have not used the creatures stage, but they wore the creatures costumes, which was really cool. I think that's right. awesome. Right. Because it's different. And I also want to be clear, the set that I went up and walked around and got close to was the Sail Away electric show. So that was the non-makeup. Okay, that was the non-makeup, um, not Eric creatures. Wanted to show me okay, that, got it. Got look, it. You know, I've been playing, obviously, I've been drumming my whole life. And he wanted to show me the finish and, and the inside of the shells. He also brought, and this is totally drum geek stuff, he didn't have matching to- toms per se. He brought a couple of concert toms up. Those concert toms don't have skins on the bottom, like Peter Chris used to. You know, like those are concert toms, and you know, as the rest of the kit did have bottom skins. Anyways, he, he just thought it would be cool because in the '70s, a lot of bands used to do that. They just brought up drums. It wasn't so, you know, back in the '70s, they just wanted things to sound good. They, you know, yeah. Uh, some some drummers would have parts brought up for certain songs. You know, they so, didn't have. Well, so when you walk up on stage to look at this kit before the sail away show you're with eric Mm -hmm. are you actually able to have the conversation and share with each other what you're talking about or do you have a bunch of people standing there yelling eric 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 Eric, eric's talking he's he brought me back there we were talking in a minute he you know uh look he's eric singer everybody on the ship wants to talk to him which I totally get. I was yeah, just wondering so if you were actually, because he's your friend, if you guys actually had a chance to have a few minutes yeah, for him we, to show you what he was trying to show you. We did have a few minutes. It was cool. That we happened behind the, the locked door in the bedroom. I, I ran up on the stage. I walked around the kit. And they were still setting up mics and stuff. And, and being that, again, you know, musician who, who does tons of gigs, I know you don't want to get in those guys' ways, especially, you know, I don't care if it's a local show or a big show. You know, I just checked everything out up close. It was cool. Walked around the kit. But they were still pumping gear up there. So I tried to stay clear then. And then uh, Brent from uh, Brent Fitz, who plays with Slash, played with Union. He's good friends with Eric. He was back there. Him and Eric were talking. And then keep in mind, where we're talking, everyone in the crowd, because the crowd had already got there. They're, you know, Eric brought picks. He's over there. So, you know, and then I, I, I ended up, talking to a few people that I knew from past cruises that were backstage crew guys. And then uh, he had to go join the band uh, to get ready. We walked out. And matter of fact, when we walked out, Gene, Paul and Tommy and doc were walking in. So he just joined them. And then I went on, on my way. So, um, you know, again, I'm just always real respectful about that stuff. And I'm, I know, I know how super duper lucky I am to get to do cool stuff like that. So I always treat it with a ton of respect. You know what I mean? Well, of course you do. But my point is, is that, you know, he wanted to show you something and I think it's great that you guys actually had a chance for well, that to happen. That's what I was talked asking about it before the cruise. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, Right. Stupid stuff like the inside of these shells were finished. I just drum stuff, stuff that no, no, I t- fucking it, care. I get it. I'm just for me, it's neither here nor there. I just wanted to get the perspective of where you you were actually able to do it. Yeah, yeah it was really, really. I, cool. I I, I want to go back to um the tank stage. So I'm gonna be the nitpicky, geeky, anal kiss fan right now. Put that hat on, and I'm like Mark. Freaking Creatures Tour, Creatures Stage was just, it's imprinted in my brain forever. That was just incredible. The one thing when I saw the pictures of the tank that I just, I couldn't get over was the gun didn't have the little side protruding things coming out of it. It was just a straight nozzle coming out. If you remember, I I don't know if you remember, Tommy, it had had little... Get your mind out of the gutter. You guys no, kept no, no. doing it to me. Yeah, but you, you know what I'm talking about, Mark. It's yeah. just like that 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 little that little thing right there. I'm like, why couldn't you do that? Why? Why couldn't that happen? I, I it's funny because they got the sides correct with the the pipes coming down. Yeah, the pipes coming and the, down and, and the, the up, fake I don't know. steps. Yeah, I, I don't know how well you guys got to see the treads looked the good. Treads, had, you know? The treads, the, yeah. the treads on the side, because those were things like I I actually remember. When I went to the show, I couldn't, from where I was, I couldn't see the detail of the treads on the side. 
and finally when I saw pictures after the show, I'm like, that is so freaking cool. They went to such great detail that they put the tr- the side of the treads in there on the stage. And when they had that on the cruise, I was like, that's freaking cool. That little detail, I was just like, oh, awesome. I loved it. But that one little part of the tank gun, I was just like, oh, front and center, and it wasn't there. Yeah. Couldn't you get some that toilet was- paper tubes and just stick them on? That, you know, again, uh, the shows were great. Um, I got to admit, I always go to the second show. And this is the first year that we really didn't get anything extra per se, except they played Deuce instead of instead of uh, Strutter, I think, the second night. Normally, they get usually get an extra tune or so. And speaking of extra tunes, I was very lucky on the Sail Away show. Again, I was talking three sides with somebody. Liz and our group of friends were, where we always hang out. Um and as I'm walking by, I see Jill and Russell, and, and they were sitting up by the soundboard. They just go up and start talking to them. Next thing I'm watching the show from the, from uh, from up on the soundboard, and I, I could see the set list. And for those who don't probably don't know, uh, and some people were complaining about it, and again, I don't know why, but they did shout it out loud. Shout it out loud. They just did when they were up there. It was one of the last two songs, I think, and. That wasn't on the, that wasn't on the set list. They were just kind of like, hey, let's you know we're having fun, but let's play another song. And somebody said something close by after the show was complaining because keep in mind, in, in this set you got you know some 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 rarities, and it was cool. They opened up the electric show with "I Stole Your Love," so I mean, cool. you can't go wrong there. And anything for my baby, and it's funny, you know, at the end of the set, and somebody made a oh, you know, they did shout out loud. I'm like, look, for the millionth time. And whether, <laughs> look, when you see the crowd, when Shout It Out Loud was on, and look, I don't understand why people people get upset. There was more people getting rock into that tune than anything for my baby. And don't get me wrong. Or not anything for, uh, Love Her All I Can, I kept saying. Anyway, same record. Anyways, uh, uh, Love Her All I Can. I like Love Her All I Can more, obviously. It's a song they don't play a ton. And, you know, if you're going to be on the cruise, you'd rather hear Love Her All I Can. And again, for, before I get hate mail, I didn't mean to say anything for my baby. I meant Love Her All I Can. Um, But as I said to the guy next to me who's complaining, I'm like, didn't you see the crowd reaction? When Kiss is on stage, that's what they want to see. They want to see people jumping up and down and getting into the song. And there was, there was that more so for Shout It Out Loud. And... It is what it is. You know what I mean? It's just some more of a well-known song. So even the people that are, you know, fans but not deep-cut fans are going to enjoy it. They ha- It has to be a mix of everything. I'm telling but- you, there's, these cruises, for as much as people may not want to admit it, there's a good number of people who are just, they're KISS fans. But they're not, you know, I call them burn bitch burn fans. You know what I mean? They, they, they're not Mark they Jacchini fans. But that's cool because I talked to more than a few people. Some of the people who watch the show, they they say stuff to me like, "I don't know the records the way you know some of these other people." I just like the heads, They're right? Not- and, that, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and to your point, um, I think one of the things that I realized about seeing them this past summer is at times, and also too, Michael, when we were out in Vegas. It's not as much the songs that they do, it's the presentation of the songs that they do. Meaning, this tour, like we've discussed already last summer, everything was so incredibly fresh. And I shared with Tommy um, an observation I had from the Des Moines show. And for those of you that didn't make it to that, Des Moines is a really, it's, it's a large racetrack like most state fairs but i was shocked when i got there at how short the stage was so the stage probably didn't come up past your knees so i was standing right in front of tommy's amp and i got that direct feed the whole night and to listen to him play those songs the way he did was so i don't even know what the word is uh just raw it 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 brought these songs to life in a different way that they hadn't been in the past. So I think that if I'm correct, that's kind of partially also what you're saying is, is that people just love it because of the way it's presented more than the song itself. 
Speaking of which, too, and I was I was really happy that it was brought out in the Q and A. Um, I've known for a long time that that Eric and Tommy are bugging Gene and Paul to play the rare songs. I just never said it because it was said to me in private conversation. But in right. the Q and A, Tommy and Eric said it publicly in front of Gene and Paul. Like we've been trying to get them to play these rare songs. They won't do it. Nice. So it was, did, did they it say was why? Nice that, did they say why they won't do it? Um, you know the why I really can't uh, get into. But well, no. Um, but I mean, I mean, in 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 his answer, did he address the why, or did he just end it there that we've been trying to get Paul, them to do? No, it? Paul. Paul and Gene just kind of took their lumps. You're right. You know. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. Exactly. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sidetrack you, but that's what no, I was no, thinking no, because we're talking about that. What we look, you know, we're talking about everything on the cruise, and that was part of it because fans fans do want a lot of the deeper cuts. But and Eric and Tommy are the reason you've gotten getaway on the first cruise. Are the reason you got, um, you know, almost human. Are the reason that you got the old. And see, and I don't expect deep cuts all the time when I go to see them live. It was just, I want them to mix it up. So then, you know, get rid of, you know, I don't know, get rid of uh, God of Thunder and do Almost Human or do Unholy. You know, do, do um, I don't know, uh, I Stole Your Love instead of something, whatever it might be. Just mix it up. It doesn't have to be, you know. I did, I did tell Paul privately um when i did the the meet and greet with him although we talked 99 percent about 70s hard rock bands that we like um but the the other two percent i did slip in the uh hey can we get something from monster and sonic boom and he's like there's just not enough time we're trying to keep the most people happy with what they're coming to see yeah i get it but I don't know, man. I, I love this era of the band. I love those two records. Yeah. And for the for the for the sake of argument, for four of the six cruises, although the, I think maybe last year, I don't remember, but they were doing something off those records. You know, what I mean, they were doing um, uh, da, 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 the one off a of monster there, uh, Hell or Hallelujah. It's they were be a classic. It. it is to me, but. Uh, Anyways, also another reason, and this is why you knuckleheads have to go on the cruises. Hung out with Alan. Hung out with uh, with Darren Crowder. Hung Alan, out. Didn't he do a book, a Japanese book? He did that one. That's I've heard it's <laughs> really good. I'd love to see that, you but it's sold you. out. It is, and there's one that says Tommy right here, about an arm's reach from me. <laughs> but anyways, hung out with him. Had dinner with Peter Arquette. Um, yeah, I got to circle back with Peter too. Again, I, I have been so busy. I wanted to thank him again for his generosity um, and, uh, at his expo. Saw my, saw my buddy Ron's, uh, Ron Buckley, and and you know, and and Russell, and and you know, everybody else I mentioned already, and uh, you know, did you see so Kevin? Many, hmm? Did you see yes, Kevin? I did. Saw Kevin. Good. Again, I'm. You know, and it's time constraint. If I mentioned everybody, I had a conversation with this thing would be five hours long. You sound like romper room. Yeah. But let me tell you, again, to a person, everyone was so nice. And to my friends who I got to see, just a wonderful time, you know, getting to see everybody. Um, I do want to switch over to some of the merch um, because uh, I know a lot of people like it. This is one of the first things that ended up in our room. It's like a backpack. Got drawstrings on the back, kind of cool, eh? Mm-hmm. And it's got, it's like so it's refrigerated on the, it's it's got a liner in there so you can keep cold stuff in there, I guess. But Next, I think that, I thought this was rather neat. Ugh, that was in that's in your room. Just that's in your room. That's just something you get from it. You didn't have to buy that. Well, um, technically, every, you did. You bought a cruise. Yes, yes, I spent uh, quite a bit of money. It's a very um, expensive backpack. As, <laughs> as everybody knows who goes on the cruise, every day is a different cup. And uh, they're just fun to, to collect. This is the. It's funny, though, two people were going, what's with the Paul one? Is that like the worst star you've ever seen? Yeah, it is. 
compare that to the Tommy. Yeah, the Ace one looks a lot better. So, um, so like I said, every day there's a, a Tommy. Cup and... I can't hear you. You're are you muted? Sorry. So every day it comes with. Oh, a... that's okay. I mean, you can stay muted. We're fine with that. So now was Wait. was there a fiery fight to get the cups? You know, this year at the end they said anybody who didn't get a cup, um, they can come and get if you missed a day. Because that was a big thing before. The cups would run out really, really fast. You can come down, baby. Now's the time. Anything for my baby. That's right. <laughs> Why don't you grab a chair? Stand. We're just talking about the merch now. But we were talking about all the, the fun stuff earlier. I'm just showing everybody. These are the, the shirts. These you have to buy. These are cool. But uh, then there's the, the cool stuff. Um, Nicholas Olson. I think I showed these last show. <laughs> it's like, hey, I know you don't have these. So. Tell the I, ketchup I, I know. I know you don't wear boxers. I know you're a briefs man. I, no, I'm not. I'm a boxer guy. Tell um, the ketchup, don't forget to tell the ketchup story. Oh, I got the ketchup upstairs. I'll show okay. it. Right. Um, Hi, honey. Yeah, go, get, go get the, uh, the Mexican ketchup and the... Uh, and the Norwegian ketchup. So <laughs> it was a virtual UN of ketchups. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a lot of questions about the champagne of ketchup? I, I did. I did. And also, did I, did I tell you my story about um, the football? Did I tell no. that last week? Oh, no. yes, yes, where you would wrap a bottle of ketchup up in a in, towel. Oh, yes, a, yes. And, uh, and then it was cool because uh, Esteban from, from Spain, he brought this to me. I said, what the fuck is this? He goes, Mark, these come because they're not licensed. You know what I mean? Yeah. He goes, and I don't know if it was in Spain or something. He's like, these come with like Dora the Explorer and another whatever bootlegged character. And then he's like, he gave this to me, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> um, a nice bootleg DVD someone gave me. Or... Uh, oh, excuse me. Nice, Liz. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is it. From Ash, and I can't remember his name. That's from which country? I told you the story. This is from uh, Norway. 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 And again, and I told you the story. You know, I'm just rocking, and he was like, he had it with him. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that, that somebody on the cruise ship is walking yeah. around with he a like, bottle of ketchup up. for when he meets Mark. <laughs> yeah, and then I got these from Mexico. Oh. Two for ninety six cents. Two for ninety six cents. You're gonna have like a, a you're gonna have a no, no you, I gotta piss. You're, oh my god. Where's he going? He's gotta piss. Gotta go pee -pee. Pee -pee. He just gotta gets pee -pee. up and walks away in the middle of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I gotta pee. Liz can sit and talk. Give him a bag. Just sit there. We can't see what he does below camera. He has a cup. <laughs> I'm surprised he doesn't. I would. Big yeah. enough. Yeah. So, so he container. needs to like start a, a wall of ketchups. No. <laughs> no. That's an official no. That's an official no. Ketchup, <laughs> I, they're the only. I don't eat ketchup that much. Not like them. They put it on everything. Him and Ian. And I mean so everything. Has and he tried to put ketchup? Like... Has he tried to put ketchup on ketchup, like two different ones, to see how that works? If you can mix them together, and what do they explode? I think he did once because we had bacon ketchup. <laughs> I think he mixed it with regular ketchup once. He might now, have, you know, it, on the same plate. Well, I he get tried offended because I'm saying if you're putting ketchup on my food, it means my food tastes like shit. Right. That's Does, my my, my, my dad. My egg? dad would always say that. Why are you putting steak sauce on a steak? You, the steak itself should taste good. Right. Well, that's how I feel when he puts ketchup on stuff because that's, that's not the reason. I'm like, well. It he just likes his food like really wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm just he, eating meatball tonight. It's the only thing he doesn't put ketchup on. Does he? Would he try and put it like on an egg waffle? I don't think he puts it on waffles. No, grilled okay. cheese. I get grilled eggs. cheese. That that grilled cheese. That's yeah. 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 So he's put it on. He's put it on steak, but he don't eat steak because he don't like it. He's a meatloaf man. Yeah, he's a, meat, yep. he's a meatloaf guy. He likes, his, he likes his meat ground. 
Yes, ground beef. You don't eat steak. Once it like in the shape of a tube. Pre-chewed meat. <laughs> Makes it easier. You can eat faster. Yeah. <laughs> well, so tell us about your your opinion of or experience on the cruise. What was it like? Oh, it's always fun. But you know, I like it now more because we've met all those people. So we have yeah. two groups that we meet up with. You know, and we all get our rooms next to one another. We all yeah, eat Marcus breakfast told together. Us we do all our- about that. I mean, that's the fun part. Um, I don't get involved with anything else. He wants to go see shows. I usually don't go see a lot of them. I just like to walk around, lay out, and sit by the bar. And meet the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, be nice. <laughs> Are you, Liz, she's hysterical. She can give it better than she can take it. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, well, we could go down a whole disgusting line with that comment. And that was, yeah. Well, so, yeah, Mark was just saying that it was overwhelming with people that he met that liked the show and all that. And it just sounded like it was a great experience all the way around. It was. I mean, I it was, people were coming to me. I had no clue who the hell they were. I mean, I had some guy come to me. We were, I was in the um, cafeteria getting food. Was he from Spain, Mark? I think he was from Spain. And I hear someone go, Lisa, Lisa. And I just kept walking. I'm like, my name's not Lisa. It's Liz. And yeah. he came up to me and starts talking to me about some cookbook of tapas food. And I'm like, to myself, who is this person? And do they have the right person? Because I had no, no idea. And then as soon as he said, I feel bad because I brought Mark something and not you. I'm like, ah. Uh, ding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ding, ding, ding. And then I'm like, oh, that's okay. Then I walked away going, what the hell was that about? And then later on, he, I know Mark told you that story. I was running to our room and some guy out of nowhere goes, get out of the way. Mrs. Chiquini's coming through. And I turn and look at him and I'm like, what the fuck was that? And it kind of creeped me out. And I just ran down the hallway. And then I found him I go, I don't know who this dude was, but he knew I was Mrs. Chiquini. He cleared, he, like, he cleared the way. Like, he cleared the way. It's like what he said. He was get out of the way. Miss Chiquini's coming. I'm like, how nice. Like, really? Like, okay. I mean, how nice everyone, seen, everyone's seen always it. nice, but you know. And then the big, huge Norwegian guy. I don't know who that was. That's his pick right there. You show the black. Yeah, well, yellow. and I think I think that it, this, this is huge. This big Norwegian guy goes, "Hey, here, come start talking to Mark," and I'm like this guy and he took a picture then he goes and sits down with some other people we knew he comes back and goes excuse me can i take a picture with your wife and i'm like and it's like almost like the can we animal house he wanted to move the table so i'm sitting <laughs> on the table i'm like sure she gets up take the thank you so much here have a pick i'm like okay yeah so it can make a long story short it was a lot of fun, you know, fun. well and i think i think it's fair to to make the mention right now just for future reference, when we're somewhere like the cruise or expo or whatever, always come up and introduce yourself because you guys see us every week. You know us. We don't know you. We don't know you. So you got to tell us who you are. Yeah, you know? It's like overwhelming. It's, oh, hi. I'm like, who the hell was that? But we did get a lot of, where's, where are the other two? Yes. Where are the other two? Are they coming? Are they on the cruise? No. Why not? Well, <laughs> One has a little child that can't leave his wife and little one. The other one has another business, has kids that are in school too. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Uh, that's one thing you guys do have going as your kids are grown. We, when they weren't grown, we just said, find a babysitter. Here, here's some money. Just leave them. Home here. alone. That's it. We left Emily <laughs> in high school. Like, here, hand out candy for Halloween. We're going. Bye. Hey, it works. Hey, when you don't raise dumbasses, you're, you're in good shape. So. <laughs> yeah. That is always oh, helpful, I too. like the cruise. I have fun every time we go on it. Well, especially, like you said, you've made friends. And so you yeah, have people to also to going. hang out with. And, you so, know, so this is the campers. This is man. our campers. Oh, nice. Is that the key crew? Yeah, the, the, that is our campers crew. And they, um, the one couple brings their kids, as you can see. But we've watched them grow up. We've seen them for the last five years. Right. You know, they're 13 and 16 now. But they That's do their awesome. own thing. The six-year-old hung out with us, and he just thought we were hilarious. But that, that, that's what yeah. I'm talking we, We've known these people. We met them on the first cruise or two, and we've been super tight. 
ever since. We have so much fun. Matter of fact, we're going to going to see a Wings game in Buffalo uh, in January with them. They've come here for concerts, and it's just great having people that you've met that are just so much fun. You know, just awesome. Well, yeah, it adds to the whole the whole experience because then you're not just looking forward to the Kiss Cruise or the the that part of it. You're seeing friends. Right. I mean, it makes sense, and that's I suppose too. What's cool about this type of thing is is you make friends with people from all over the country and all over the world. You know, yeah. so at least you have something to talk about when you don't know each other. As you talk about Kiss, you know. I don't. I walk away. Yeah, I know. I know you do. You always have a book and you're gone. I'm gone. <laughs> Give me a drink. I'm a book and here. a drink. I was going to say and a drink, book right? And a drink. That's not it. <laughs> All right. I'm going upstairs. Bye. Bye. Liz. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. You too. And by the way, we have spaghetti coming up here shortly. So uh, I went up to my, when I'm up there, my daughter's like, Dad, I'm hungry. Well, we're, we've got a lot to talk about yet, so you're not going anywhere. You just walked away, taking a took a pee. So a couple of things that I know our listeners want to no, talk about. No, 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 I'm good. So, but anyways, let, move, let, move let, 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 Mark, Mark, let me let me bring up the um the first show set list for the elect the plugged in show. So let me just run down night one's set list, to people here. Creatures of the night, Detroit Rock City. Keep Me Coming, Radioactive, Rock and Roll Hell, Wouldn't You Like to Know Me, I Love It Loud, Firehouse, Cold Gin, Hotter Than Hell, War Machine, Love Gun, God of Thunder, Shout It Out Loud, Black Diamond, Strutter, Rock and Roll All Night. Now, that some fans might go, well, that's not a really deep, deep set list. But I would sit here and go, holy crap, that is a phenomenal set list that I think would actually work as a normal tour set list. Other than uh, I Love It Loud, that that needs to go. They used that pretty much in uh, uh, Mexico City. Did you see in Tijuana, right back to they got rid of everything. You know, got rid of all the new songs. I, you know, I'm kind of kind of a, lucky in the way that, like, I saw them play Radioactive in 79. I saw Paul play Wouldn't You Like to Know Me. Um, mm-hmm. you know, don't get me wrong. It was cool seeing them. But, you know, uh, I was more excited to see Rock and Roll Hell and uh, uh, Keep Me Coming. Um, those, although, <laughs> boy, um, they didn't play them. Well, well, I was going to ask you. So, how how did how did Paul especially sound with those songs? It was just the whole band. It just seemed very. I'm just being honest. I, you know, the coolness factor factor overshone the. It really wasn't uh, super tight factor, if you know what I mean. So, like, not a lot of rehearsal, maybe. I don't think so, and I, I know I didn't ask, and I wouldn't ask stuff like that, but uh, Gene really seemed to have the melody line to rock and roll hell. Like, it was like, would you rehearse this twice? You know what I mean? It, it just, I don't know. It just it, it just seemed like it was read off of the cue card almost. It didn't seem like he knew it, and he had it down, and he, you know what I mean? That song in particular, um you know, both times, because I watched both shows, and both times it was, you know, it just, again, it was cool. It's great. But the performance wasn't where I thought as a professional musician it should have been. That's all. On his part, played well, but the enunciation, again, and it's on YouTube, just don't take my word for it. Go check it out. I, I just don't think he nailed the the melody line of the vocals and i don't think he you know had everything down as tight as i wish as i wish he would have that's all you know i'm just some dumbass from detroit so it, it doesn't matter but <laughs> no seriously no, no, it, no, know, listen listen cool. i mean you, you're right i mean we're, we're kind of putting on our geek hats right now and doing the let's be a kiss fan and I'll pick it apart I'll but it was a cool set list as a set list goes but, that was but, a but pretty on. good mix i want to i want to go back i, I want to go back real quick Whereas a couple years ago when he did Almost Human, he was way more into it. You know what I mean? 
it's like he took the time a couple years ago when they did Almost Human to get into the demon character and sing that well, song. Do you suppose, and, and you know, we don't have answers to this, but do you suppose it, it uh, sort of something like that, it comes down to he loved, he loves the song Almost Human much more than he loves the song Rock and Roll Hell, and therefore Rock and Roll Hell was sort of like, it's just a job to do, and I got to play this song where Almost Human was like, fuck, I love this song. I love that's, this. That's, that's it. That's the way I felt, to be honest, you know. It's just the way I felt. Keep me coming. Um, again, just loosey-goosey wasn't as tight as I would have liked it. You know what I mean? Um, uh, the, sa- the second night, uh, it's just stupid stuff like this. You know, Tommy went into the solo too quick. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. I, you know, and I was just kind of bummed. As soon as he made the mistake, I'm like, ah, you got another measure to go. You know what I mean? And and you could hear the screw up because I love that song so much. It was like, oh, it kind of bummed me out when when that happened. But it, shit, that shit happens. I mean, again, like they say, there there's four guys up here. They're not playing to a fucking tape recorder. You know what I mean? It, you get well, it, mistake and all. So let let me also ask you. So the other thing fans or listeners are going to want to know about and. And we're going to bring this up because not everybody lives on Facebook and knows all of this stuff right away. The costumes. So um, Tommy wore Ace's elder outfit, the long mm-hmm. lightning bolt with the silver wrestling boots, basically. It's technically, it's technically um, did into the creatures era. Paul had his creatures costume he did not wear the cut off creatures concert shirt he wore what a lot of people call the man bra <laughs> mm-hmm. um he had the fox tail on the first show not the second okay so fox what tale. fox tail wasn't on the second show no just the first show see i love i that was a little detail that i loved was that fox tail but the rest of paul's costume looked spot on um eric wore wore um, the Catman makeup, and let's make sure everybody knows Tommy wore the Spaceman makeup. Eric wore the Catman makeup, but wore the Fox's costume. And I was, like I said last, you know, I was lucky. I I was uh, in contact with Wendy, their costume person, a lot before the cruise. I sent her a ton of information, and I was, you know, I love I love the fact that they trust me enough to, you know. To, to help to let me be part of that sort of thing. So I, I sent her stuff. She sent me some questions and I sent her some video and um, what a wonderful, wonderful person. Wendy is uh, their costume. Well, can person. you, can you, um, can you talk about where you gave them a little help in costume answers? Um, Yeah. I mean, uh, just silly stuff. Like uh, she didn't have really definite pictures and stuff on some things. And I sent and like on the back of Eric's boot heel, didn't know if it was two or four lines. I mean, they, she really went out of her way to get it perfect. And to make sure that the, you know, the stick holders in Eric's boots. That was a little there. detail that I, I love to see that. Did you notice you know, it? Yeah. That he put the it's stick holders that, in. It's something we talked about uh, when I talked to, to Wendy. So, like I said, it was, it was fun being part of all that, um, you know, just as a fan, again, anytime I get to help, uh, be it the, you know, the Japanese kiss expo or a book, or, you know, help something with a CD, it's, it's just so fun for me. I, I, I get so into it. I'm, I'm just so happy to be part of the process, no matter how small, you know, because I love this so much. Now, now Gene's costume was... For the most part, his eld or his his creatures yeah. costume. Now I and and again, I'm putting on my picky, pain in the ass kiss hat here because I've made it very clear. Gene's cre- original creatures of the night with the spiked boots is my absolute favorite Gene outfit ever. Um, he he did not have the spiked boots. He had the love gun boots. I never liked those because they look a little. Compared to the rest of the costume, it makes his legs look a little weak, if that means anything. I, I'm with you. I, I thought the same thing. I was pretty disappointed um, that he didn't wear Now, the... I will say that in Mexico, he wore his monster boots, monster. which looked much better. They were much more brutal and tough looking. 
Well, it's here's one little piece of minutia. Um, originally, Eric was going to go with the long sleeve um, creatures outfit, and I said from the get go, I thought the the short sleeve one would be better. Um, and then uh, I don't. It wasn't because of me, but you know, like a week or two later, she's like, "Oh, we are going with the short sleeve one," but originally. She said they were going with the long sleeve one. Now the other the other so. thing about Jean's costume, which and I can understand why this was done, it was not as fully open chest like he had yeah. back. And listen, it, it's he's he's a gravity. much different build. Gravity it hits all of us, so it was much more closed in. And they still tried to keep a lot of the same features. It just covered him more, you know. And it's just again having been to the Creatures tour and absolutely fallen in love with that tour and that costume. It was those little things where I was just like, oh, it's just not, it's not the exact same memory for me. But it, saying all that, it was freaking cool to see. And, and, and I would actually love to see Gene continue with this costume. If, if they don't go back to the monster costumes... I Which I love, hope they don't. I would love to see them continue with these creatures' costumes. I yeah, think they I, look fabulous. I think they're amazing costumes. The, the only thing I don't like about them and haven't from the beginning is, is I wish that Tommy's boots were higher. You know? The short boots seems... But Ace never, that was had, more L- L- but Ace never wore platforms in the creatures' era. No, no, I know that. But that I always thought that that... That seemed odd to me that they wouldn't have built the boots up. But again, I'm nitpicking. I was thrilled to see it, and I would love to see that live. Yeah, I think it looks great. I think Paul... Keep talking. I'm just going to show some of this stuff just yeah. so people... You know, I think Paul's costume looks lean and mean. Um, I think Gene's costume makes him look more like a... a demon. A warrior and not a demon, actually. Less demon, because okay. he doesn't have wings. He looks more like a warrior person than a person trying to be a demon, if that makes sense. Okay, fair enough. So um, I'd love to see him continue with that. And I was happy to see them continue with those costumes in Mexico. Yeah. Well, and who knows? Maybe this is what they will do moving forward. A lot will be um, discovered after the first of the year when they – isn't it the first show they do after that, the um, one in Oklahoma? Yeah, there's so. they've got a handful of shows. Yeah, I think that's some cool shit, man. Um, as I said to you guys earlier, I did do the Paul Stanley. Yeah, so tell us about that whole experience. That was that was yeah. really cool. Um, this is the pass we had for that. So how many people did it? I think there were yes. forty or fifty people who who bought the guitars. Mine's over there. I can go grab it. Of course, um, we gotta grab it. We got to see this guitar. Yeah. Um, hold on. How nice is that, eh? Beautiful. Let, let, let me ask you, so you get the guitar on the cruise and then you have to take it home yourself or will they ship it to you? No, no, you, it's yours, man. You got to walk off with it. Does it come in a box? Um, only if you talk nice to it. Oh. Okay, so wait a minute. <laughs> what does it say? Uh, what, does, what does it say? Did you miss that, Tommy? No, I heard it. <laughs> it just wasn't that funny. <laughs> No, what does it say, you, though? You just, you just play through it, man. Yeah, play yeah. through it. Yeah. So what does it say, though, Mark? You had it personalized. It says Ibanez on the end. <laughs> <laughs> You're really not going to share that with everybody? Um, I am. You can just read it. I can't, because I... Okay. There's a glare. Live to, to win. the Chikini family. family. Live to win all the best. Three I love sides ketchup. of the coin rocks. I love ketchup, Paul Stanley. <laughs> well, the nice thing about this, you now, if I, I get hit by a bus, my I, each one of my kids gets a your, kiss your, guitar. Your kids could right. your kids could eBay it without an issue. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, no, it's just cool, you know. Um, 
And here's some of the picks I got. This is kind of cool because these are the picks that these ones were only given out to the people that did the uh, – The private show. So those are kind of cool. So what was the series of events for Paul's private meet and greet? I mean, what what did he do first? Did he come in and give you guitars first, or did he do a Q and A no, first, no, no. or did he perform? He sat on a stage and uh, and played. What, you know? what what stuff uh, did he play? Started with a Donovan tune. Um, if you remember Donovan, yeah, the mm-hmm. hurdy man. Pretty was dirty. he taking? Was he taking requests, or was it pretty much he knew what he was going to do? I well, to be fair, and this kind of bummed me out. I found out afterward because last year I think was the first year he did the private acoustic show, and I and I didn't sign up. For, I just just you know whatever didn't think about it. Then after it happened, I was really bummed because, like I said many times. As I get older, experiences mean more to me than anything. And yep. was it expensive? It's damned expensive. But you know what? Lost my um, half. And if how much is the guitar? Or how much is the whole really experience? Talk about money stuff, but it, it's easily found out. You can just go online. I, I, I don't like talking about money. Fair enough. No, I know you don't. It's expensive. You know, okay. it's expensive. You know, some people would say it's not worth it. But again, I, you know. That's a company I don't want to talk money. I, I spent the money. Well, the only reason I asked in this particular situation, all kidding aside, is because I know it's it's readily out there so people can find it. I, I had run across it. I just didn't remember what it was. You could buy another cruise for it. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, it was – here's why I was a little bummed because I found out afterwards um, – that he had more, he played way more songs the year previous. Now, with a caveat, I told you earlier that he talked about the problems they had with the, you know, with the merch, and he talked a lot about the cruise in general. The whole time his guitar wouldn't stay in tune, and he seemed a little perturbed that the guitar he was handed wasn't in tune. And he had a capo on it, if you know what that is. Yeah. That's yep. a little not a lot of it's just a thing it's a thing that and, clamps and, down on the strings correct correct um he was having some problems and it really bombed bummed him out and it's funny too just again when i'm listening i'm like boy that thing's fucking horribly out of tune when i was listening to it, it kind of bummed me out a little bit and then he stopped and he, for the longest time while they're waiting to get a guitar he just you know he's up there in front of you know whatever 100 people and you know, he just started talking about the cruise and life in general. And because it really was billed as a whatever, an evening with Paul. But the year previous, he played way more songs, you know. Now, the one thing that was cool, other than the Donovan tune, keep in mind, that's a song nobody has heard him play before. So that was right. Cool. He played a song. He was talking about uh, Hard Luck Woman, which he played. And then he's like, hey, I wrote this in 76, and no one's ever heard me play this before. And again, this is what the experience. I got to hear Paul Stanley sing a song that he'd never played in front of people before from written in 1976. How fucking cool is that? What song? Again, no one can... Well, and I wasn't, I, and, and please don't misunderstand, I wasn't uh, judging you to say it is or isn't worth it. That wasn't my point. No, I was I just you, curious. I, I, oh, I know 100% you weren't. I, I was just saying in general. Yeah, it's the experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which, again, you know, you guys, we've talked about merchants. I don't. I just, it's just something I'm not. I'm uncomfortable. With. What was the song? What was the song he did? So long, I think was the name of the song. Just keep in mind, it's not a song that uh, anybody knew. So did he? Did he? Um, did he give the story as he? I mean, was it yeah, written he said for this Kiss? Is a song was I wrote, never. He said, "I wrote this song for Rock and Roll Over, but we already had one kind of in this vein, Hard Luck Woman." So, you know, kind of sat on the shelf. And he goes, when I was thinking of songs to do for this, I figured you guys would dig it. That right there that right- is why an experience is worth it. That's the type of stuff <laughs> when when you're sitting there, I bet you're going, holy crap. Well, it's it's like I said to, to you and, and obviously more so to Tommy, you know, I, the Robin Zander one, which was in the same room. You know, you had to fucking bring that up. <laughs> No, but but just talking about experiences, that's never happening again as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> so so to have Paul do that was super duper. Um, so 
again, you know, all about the experience. Um, what kind, what of kind of Q and A did he do? What kind of stuff did he talk about? Answer questions about. Um, you know what? Because you know, I wasn't doing it like a, you know, like I was writing down so just general stuff. He was very, a very much. He was in a great mood and um, just sat and talk to everybody and you let people come up and ask questions you know but i'm not a shout out question guy and that kind of thing you didn't you yell know, play been... rock and roll all night yeah well, look you know what i've been so blessed uh you know being able to do the things i get to do i, I let other you know what i mean in a situation like that we've discussed that yes yeah. you know you guys get you get to go do that I, you know yeah. i'm not going to step in front of somebody matter of fact, it's the same thing you know at the end i always try to be the last person you know, just like, yeah, yeah. Go. Let all like, the other well, fans like, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah when we go to those things, we always, I always stand in the back and out of the way. Yep. Again, it's just the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what? Um, well, let let me add one one more question about about the acoustic show. So I want to read something that I just read was posted on Kiss FAQ today, and tell me if you recall this. So somebody said this is what, um. Paul said about a new Kiss album. He mentions this. He goes, during Paul's Kiss Cruise solo acoustic show, he discussed Soul Station and a gig coming up with him. Soul Station's got like three gigs coming up in February. Then he said that it would be time after that to start a new Kiss album. He said that it wouldn't be like Sonic Boom or Monster. It was going to be a different style album using different instruments. He also stated that it wouldn't be a concept album. Thank Boom. God. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember it vividly. Did there, exactly. Is there any more that was discussed about that? I mean, that that's, says a lot right huge. there. That's huge. No, that was pretty much all he talked, you know, all he said. You know, that was that what what you just said is is as far as it went. You know, okay. nobody, you know, people talked to him about a new record. And, and I don't know what he really meant by that. I, I will tell you, here's what I think he meant by that. Have you two dug into the to the Destroyer book yet? Started to, yes. Just a little, little bit. I'm almost done, and let me tell you, I wish we would have had that guy on when that book came out. I love that book. I so uh, you know, I can't wait to have. We're going to have eventually have him on. I, I feel bad that you know it's, it's like a year later after the book came out. But look, we had so many fucking guests and shit going on. We didn't have time. But anyways, I think what Paul means. Is what they did on Destroyer. There was, I mean, you compare stuff like anything from my baby to, you know, even something like uh, Flaming Youth. Musically, there's just so much more going on. I really think Paul wants to take his time and have like the tubular bells and that are in I was Do You say, Love Me. I, that, I, boom, painting boom, a boom, sonic boom. picture. Yes, yes, because they really haven't. Well, let's take the elder out of it. They haven't done that sort of thing successfully since. You know what I mean? I'm just talking on a studio record where they put that kind of time into it. Where it, but they still there's a there's a quote in the book, and I wish I could remember it. And Paul's like, "We are having, you know, we call I always call it padding because we've recorded and I we put keyboards and stuff, but it's meant not to be the predominant instrument, but to be just below the guitar fills it up." You know, that, that was the first time in Destroyer they were using tubular bells and, and you know, organs and piano. Calliopes. That I was just about to say in Flaming You. Yep. Dude, dude, dude. Well, you can't imagine the song without it once you hear it. You know what I mean? It just adds so much text, texture to the song. And I think, and I'm, which I can't speak for Paul Stanley, but that's what I think he's talking about. We want to do a, another record. If we're going to do a record... It's going to have that sort of feel to it. Because whenever they've said, oh, this is like a cross between a destroyer and a revenge, it never is. Never is. Because it doesn't have that. That's, and, and again, the only way I can describe it is, is the sonic story, the background, the atmosphere around and behind the guitar, bass, drums. The, all that other p picture that's painted. <laughs> I will tell you, I've seen, again, I've played destroyer in my life thousands of times. I know their record inside and out. After reading this book, though, especially the the remix, the the remastered one, I went back. Not remastered, yeah, the remixed one that Ezrin did. I went back and I'm like, yeah, 
never really noticed that before or as much. You know what I mean? It just right. It, right. It's been fun. It's that, and it's so well written, so well written. I, I just dig the book, and um, and I love uh, I just love the way it was put together. And again, I love the fact that it can bring out the passion for a record that I really don't play too much nowadays because you know he's played it so many times. It really was. It's almost like with a fresh listen. It 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 was it was really well, so really so nice. you know. And and now we're just speculating and what ifing and stuff like that. But back to Paul's quote, I wonder if that means, or or what, not what it means. Could Paul do that himself as a producer? Or do you think he would need to have a producer brought in? I mean, that's what Bob Ezrin is known for. Bob Ezrin is really known for being able to do that. I don't know why um, they don't do what Purple did the last two records. Get Ezrin, get in there, and do it. Maybe they are. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Know. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know either. I'm just, you know. But why would Paul? Why would Paul say that though? Why would he say we're going to try stuff with different instruments? We're going to, you know, it's not going to be like the last two, but it's still going to be Kiss. Because and, that's and, pretty and much... specifically say it won't be a concept album. Correct, because uh, uh, which gets me back to why I, I took Elder off the, you know, the whole. Because that's how they describe Destroyer is the fact that it's still us, but it, it is, for lack of a better word, where's Martin Popoff when you need him? It, it was more mature. I mean, the songwriting, there's more going on. Yeah. And and I think maybe that's what he's 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 hoping. Wouldn't for. wouldn't a final right. Kiss album produced by Bob Ezrin, in my opinion, be the perfect end? I'll tell you another thing. I, here's one thing, and, and this is just me speculating. The one thing that's driving them crazy, I think, and no one's told me this. I, you know, yeah, Kiss fan in me. They never got a number one, at least in America. Got a num- you know. They want a number one record. They had a number two with, I think, Sonic Boom. I think Michael Bublé was the one. Right, Michael Bublé or whatever what the hell his name is. Yeah, he knocked him out at the last minute. Yeah, yeah. So I think if they play their cards right, I think they could get a number one. Because it's not like it used to be. If they pick the right week to drop that thing. That's all it comes down to is who's out. Come, who's the competition that week. You know, so I would love to think. I, number one, too, I'd love to see them have a number one. That's fucking awesome. That would be great. Hey, while we're talking about Kiss Records, because I do have to run here shortly. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen these by now. This was the gift at the end of the... Mm-hmm. Now, the, the, it, so it's Creatures of the Night and I Love It Loud, but those are live recordings taken from Vegas? Yes. And it comes with... Uh, Signed, fully autographed. And here's the part. So how, wait a minute. So how many people are on the boat that get one of those? 2,500. 2, okay. And how cool is this, baby? Tommy, how cool is it? He's actually taking it out. But it was it wasn't wrapped to start with, so I call bullshit. <laughs> no, that. I don't. I got to give him credit on this because he would still would not take out a pristine vinyl. Yeah, but it wasn't shrink wrap. I got to go put out a fire real quick. Seriously, I got to go put out a fire real quick. Not figure, figuratively, not literally. Got to take a dump. Uh, talk amongst, talk amongst yourselves. Nah, I wish I did. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back. I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> yeah, people who well, love. He froze again. Dump. So so while 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 Mark is away, I will show a little. Well, he hung up on us. A little um. Well, way to go, Mark. My little collectible that came in about two weeks ago. Oh. It's kiss a turn. kiss. Lionel. Lion. It, it well, it's an H O gauge. Um, okay. Kiss train. It's from. Um. Oh, what the heck is the name of the company that's doing this? Um, uh, come here. Let's find my certificate of authenticity, which absolutely means nothing. Um, it's from the Bradford Exchange. 
They make all these high-end collectibles. I was I think, just going to say that sounds familiar. I think they've got a series of Kiss motorcycles that they just released now. But this is a series. There's going to be like three more train cars that they're releasing. And listen, some people will go, how, how stupid and cheesy it's a train. But as a kid growing up, I was big. Into mo- ruled. I was big into model railroads. I had a huge model railroad in the basement, HO gauge. So this, I mean, I don't have a train set now, but this was just cool because as a kid, when I was 12 or 13, this would have been the coolest thing in the world would have been to have a KISS train running around. Right. So that's very cool. The other thing, and Mark might show this when he gets back, but thank you, Alan. I got, I bought a copy of the Kiss Expo hardcover book, and Alan sent it to me. And nice. let me just say, it is a, as expected, just awesome, awesome quality book. Beautiful photos, beautiful stock. Um, obviously, I can't read any of it. Um, but but it doesn't matter because with the Japanese stuff, it always looks. The pictures are always so awesome. The pictures it's are like awesome. those Time Life books. The quality, just the music quality life quality itself of the book is just phenomenal. I mean, just beautiful binding, beautiful hardcover, glossy <sighs> everything. Um, well worth it. You know, I don't know if you can get these anywhere right now, but if you come across one, I would totally say grab a copy of the um, the Japanese Kiss Expo hardcover book. It's It was a beautiful collectible piece. So, well, and I would think you could still find them somewhere. Someone's got to have you them. You might find them on eBay or something like that, and I can't talk about what the price would be worth, but if don't question the quality of the book. That's all I'm saying is the book right. itself is, is well worth it. Um, so those are my Kiss collectibles for stalling on time while Mark left left us again. I, you know, I like the way he just comes and goes as he pleases. It's amazing how he just, yeah. He's, it's very strange. He's settled right into thinking he's in charge. Well, so what else do we have to cover? Uh, there's no KISS news, really. Everything's pretty quiet now coming up to Christmas. I don't know of any major releases. No major um, releases. I mean, the new 6 the, a.m. record is awesome. The, the, uh, well, all right, if we're talking about other music. Yeah, and you, you picked up the, something new, um, didn't you? The, the new Metallica album, I really like it. Oh, that's like what it, it was. Okay. And I am listening to an advance release of Russia's, um, uh 2112 40th anniversary release. Okay. Um, sounds great. I mean, that was a phenomenal album by Rush. Did they did they remaster? They they they, re, they, they, re, they remastered the original release, and then there's a second disc that has um, newly recorded versions of the songs with other musicians. Well, look who freaking joins us. Family first, baby. Well, and I want to say one yeah. last thing before we go further. I love the new 6 a.m. record. So if you guys like heavy, I don't know. It, it, it's The songwriting is extremely good, and I, I can't stop listening to it. So I'm a huge fan. If you guys are looking for new music, you've got the new Metallica, the new 6 a.m., and then the 40th anniversary Rush uh, release of 2112. Mike? Real quick, because I missed that because I was upstairs. Um, the new Rush, how much, how much of the live stuff from Massey Hall is there? I haven't gotten to that <laughs> part of it yet, but I there's like, I want to say at least a, a, I see one track, because I didn't get the physical copy. I just got a um, press version of a digital download. There's like a 15-minute track that is Massey Hall. And I just, I haven't listened to that part of it yet. I haven't gotten to that. I've only gotten through the remastered version and started listening to the re-recorded versions with other musicians involved. Are you still there or are you frozen, Mark? He's just spinning. Oh, I'm, I see you guys. Fine. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. It's back. So, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I don't know the full uh, extent of how much it is. Part. Okay. Anyways, um, that was the uh, the record we got, which I thought was one of the, the I think this is probably the, out of all the cruises, 
I think it's by far the coolest thing. Number one, it's final. Number two, it's official. Number three, it's fucking creatures related. I mean, it's just it's just everything right. I, I absolutely love that. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of anything else um, on the cruise. The uh, Everyone was in a good mood. I uh, saw no fight, fighting, arguing, or anything you know, like that again. You never do, do you? No, and isn't that great? Isn't yeah. That great? Um, it was just a lot of fun. It went too fast. Oh, one thing we did do, my, my little Kiss Camp crew, and I've told you guys this story before, where every night we go and we get bacon and ice cream at midnight. First night it wasn't there. They did. Do they not know you're coming on the ship? Hold on. So the second night, uh, my buddy Bob, um, who's an attorney, and he's just a funny, funny go-getter type, had words with the guy. And then I went over and I gave him the same. And it's funny because he's like, I already heard the story because I went to the, the boss too. I'm like, you know, it's our sixth fucking cruise. We do this every year. Where are the fucking cookies? Where are the fucking bacon? You know what I mean? Where is this shit? I said the price didn't go down, you know? So we bitch, and I mean bitched a lot. But I mean not like screaming and demanding, but went over there and did it civilly. Like, hey, you Wrote him like a rented mule. Yeah, well, you know what? Yes. But did the whole adult sort of thing, believe it or not. I said, look, we pay a lot of money to go here. This is something we've had every year. It's not like you don't have bacon and cookies because you have them during the I'm afternoon. Mark from three sides of the coin. A freaking men, buddy. So anyways, <laughs> so what happens this second? Oh, no. Oh, God. Sell that Creatures album that's autographed okay, by an Internet we, I think connection. We might have missed, yeah, you froze again. So I think we missed everything you just so you said. said. Second so, night. Second night, what happens? The captain, he's dressed in all his captain regalia, comes over and personally brings us a plate of fucking cookies and a shitload of fucking bacon. And said, shut and up then, and eat it. Basically. And he's <laughs> like, Did you say thank you, Captain you. Steuben? Yes. And then <laughs> after that, they had bacon every night. So we were very happy. Uh, let, let, me, let me ask you bef- real quick, because I know there's something we want you to open here. Um, somebody posted something on Facebook that, like, the first day during Eric's Q&A, he mentioned me? He did. What was happening, there was a, there, they have little contests and stuff, and Eric was doing the judging for Kiss Cruise Has Talent. And what it was is people sign up in, like, July, and, and there was a guy, a couple guys who played drums, um, a couple people played guitar, one, one girl did her karate exercises, other guy did stand-up comedy, who I thought was pretty damn funny. So that you know, they, they kiss groups get them, you know, in front of the whole boat, gives them whatever minute and a half to do, you know, do their thing. And I'm sitting up front because I was, you know, look, just as somebody who performs, I like when people support me. So I show up for all those things. So I'm sitting up front and Eric sees me and he says, whatever, just, just, you know, hi from the stage. And then a guy and two guys came up to sing. And one of the guys uh, was phallically challenged. And, uh, <laughs> well yeah. Follically challenged and uh and uh that little goatee and 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 Eric looks at me and looks at him. What baby? Oh we're ready? Okay, I'll be up in a second. Um <laughs> looks at me, looks at goes, you know what? That guy looks like Mike Branvold if he ate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh yeah, and then he's like, "That guy looks just you know." Eric's going, "That guy looks just like Bramble, doesn't he?" Talk- I mean, he's talking to me in the crowd, pointing to. And of course, the crowd is cheering as they hear my name, right? Who? Oh, <laughs> God, his name was Tommy Summers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh no, but you got you know, like I said, uh, that's funny. Me, it seemed like a lot of people knew you know they got the he got the reaction out of it. So, so what what have you got there? You got a big package you teased us with last week. <laughs> Shut up, Tommy. You have a big package. <laughs> No, we all know that's a lie because we turned. I found out that he. Uh, it's a whole other story. Go. Liz told us the whole truth. But like yeah, mouth, so did Lisa. Is that... <laughs> oh, this is kind of cool too. Are you a goalie? I'm. Look, I hope Lisa thinks that I am. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, so you saw that whole thread. Good. Are you okay. guys frozen? No. No, you are. It is fine. Anyway. So, anyways, we go to Cozumel. And there's all these Cosmo. people trying to get you. We're trying to get your money. And this one store had a big kiss display. Uh, a diamond store, of all things. You know? And somebody liked the display a lot. Guess who this somebody is. We all know. Yep. So, I, I have not opened this since it came in the mail like a week ago. So, Tommy, this, this should be your dream right here. No, it's not. I want him to open something from the 70s. Like, I'd love to have him open an unopened model kit and put it together and make it run. No. That's my dream. Or I'll tell you what, Tommy, dream. I bet we could do that if you buy the model kit from Mark, give it to him, and say, put it together, he'll do it. No, he won't, because he just can't bring himself to do that. Or like if he mails us something and uses a stamp. Gotta love the packaging. Oh, look at the time. <laughs> wow, it's a white cardboard. I walked all the way through Cozumel with this to get it back on the fucking boat. And of course the KISS fans were saying, get out of the way, Mark Cicchini's coming. So did you buy that or just... Um... Take it as you left. <laughs> how, how sweet is this? I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. It's fucking huge. Wow. Nice. Diamonds International welcomes Kiss Charter Cruise. Yeah. Owners pricing only today. So were, did they look at you like you're nuts when you wanted to buy that and not some jewelry? Correct. They're like, you want the sign? Keep so the diamonds. I, I want the sign. Thing. Unless you I have a black diamond. That, let's just say I have some of my signature moves, and they work. So, um... I can just imagine Mark's such a great fast talker to get some of this stuff. Ever, it was funny. I was carrying it on the boat, and everyone's like, how'd you get that? I'm like, <laughs> I'm Mark from Three Sides. What the oh, hell? Yeah, exactly. So, okay, let me ask you also. Hannah sent you a whole bunch of stuff. She did. She did. Um, boy, oh boy. Do we want? Do we want to do that at a later show? Um, you know what? Why not? Because you know what? I, tell you the truth, my my daughter came home this afternoon. Completely get it. Yeah. Completely get it. Uh -huh. So, so let me. I, I want to get back to my family. Let, let me just ask. You don't have to show us anything, but Hannah said she was going to send you some stuff opened up. Did she do anything like that? Of course not. Hannah's a wonderful person. Oh, fuck. She's she she sent everything just as it should be all night. You know, I can do I can like this. This is so cool. Like I got all this. Stuff. So disappointing. Bags. Look at that. How sweet is that? That's we'll do, neat. You know what? We'll wrap up the we'll wrap that thing up. Maybe before we get to, we have a guest next week. We have a we? guest next week, but we could use, we could do this as your Spencer's crap for next week. Yeah. Yes. Why don't we do that? Because I want to give, uh, I want to give Alan and, and, and Hannah the proper amount of time. And like I said, I really want to get to my, my family here real quick. Got it. Got um, it. So, so let, let's homework for this week. Well, people. Well, real quick. Cause they had an earthquake over there. I just want oh, to send yes. my thoughts. Yes. Anna and, and Alan love you guys. And, and, and any of our kiss army fan listeners over in Japan, we hope everybody is wish you the best. Safe yes. And okay. And it looks like and, the tsunami they were expecting didn't, kind of didn't, dissipated. Okay, so good, good, yeah, good. at least that's what I saw earlier Keep today. Mark so. your ketchup from around the world. We want to have a yeah. ketchup wall behind Mark. It's a virtual UN of ketchups guys. So. <laughs> All right, homework. What kind of homework do we have related to the Kiss Cruise? What did you think of the costumes, of the tank stage, of the electric plugged-in show set list? What did you think of the merch? What did you think of the record? I, to me, that record is just effing cool. If you were on the cruise, what did you think of Meet and Mark? Meeting Mark or Meet and Mark? Because <laughs> I'm assuming people were eating meatloaf in your honor. I, I tell you what, I had a lot of people come. Um, was there a meatloaf uh, communion? 
a lot of people come to me when I was at dinner a lot and then and it, everyone was just so not you know what I mean like whatever I don't mean to interrupt you I'm like you, it's fine man it's cool you know I'm coming right now baby all right I'll be right up all right there. so so that's your homework related to the kiss yeah. cruise six what do you think what do you think of the set list of the show of the costumes of the staging um and, you know, Tommy and I got to think about next year because they already announced that it's sailing out of New Orleans. Don't New know. Orleans. New Orleans. We don't know where it's going or the theme, but it's sailing out of there. Go. You'll have the time of your lives. New Orleans. And I again, love it down there, though. That's a great and, city. And again, it's all about experience. Um, save. This is one of those events. And it's funny. I had a really great uh, time talking with Alan. Um, and I said, it's like planet kiss. And he said, you described it perfectly. It, it really is. If, if you're watching this show, if you have a, a way to, to get there, even if you just do it one time, you know, I, I, I seriously wonder. So if, if Tommy and I do go, um, and I'm not ruling it out. Um, I wonder if we could make an arrangement so one night in one of those lounges we sit down and we record a show with a live audience. Talk to six men. That would be fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's something to think about. Can we wrap this up there, guys? Yep, let's wrap this up. Three sides of the coin. That's it for this week. Special guest next week. We're out of here. Out. Take three sides of the coin with you anywhere. Download your five-star rated free smartphone app today and listen on your Android or Apple smartphone. Visit android.threesidesofthecoin.com or ios.threesidesofthecoin.com. Want to get your official Three Sides of the Coin logo and Shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. For interviews and media inquiries, contact Izzy at izzypresleyproductions.com. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Love the show. Go to iTunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.